The animal agriculture industry looks very different today than it did 50 or even 30 years ago. Manure management has changed as producers become more aware of the importance of protecting water resources. We see here that water bodies receive nutrients from many sources. This chart looks at two major watersheds in the U.S. The green sections represent nitrogen and phosphorus from livestock manure. In the Gulf of Mexico location, livestock is a major source of phosphorus, but contributes only a very minimal amount of nitrogen. In the Chesapeake Bay area, about a quarter of both the nitrogen and phosphorus comes from livestock. Excess nutrients, especially phosphorus, upset the balance in aquatic ecosystems, a process called eutrophication. Eutrophication stimulates plant and algae growth, which results in decreases in dissolved oxygen. This is known as hypoxia, a condition that is harmful or even deadly to aquatic life. Excess nutrients can also affect water bodies that are sources of drinking water. As a result, cities in affected watersheds spend more money to treat water that's been contaminated by nitrates or by algae blooms resulting from excess phosphorus. This is why it is important to protect surface waters from all sources of nutrient discharge. The federal government took the first step four decades ago by passing the Clean Water Act, which enables the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency to create programs and enforce regulations to protect water. Some of these regulations focus on nutrient discharge from the largest livestock and poultry farms, also known as Concentrated Animal Feeding Operations, or CAFOs. Because implementation of CAFO regulations varies from state to state, this video will focus on best practices. Best practices are generally agreed upon strategies to minimize manure nutrient losses from the primary risk areas on farms. The first risk areas to look at include open lots or uncovered manure storage. Rain or snow melt on these risk areas can result in runoff, carrying manure and nutrients with it. To manage this risk, open lots and solid manure stockpiles should be covered and located away from environmentally sensitive features such as surface water, drainages, or wells. Strategies may include relocating lots or manure stockpiles or using berms to divert clean water around the area. Any runoff should be collected and contained in structures such as settling basins and holding ponds. Another area of concern involves structures that are not properly monitored or maintained, including tanks that are covered by overgrown weeds or trees. They are at risk for overflows, leaks, or failure. Properly maintaining these structures reduces the risk that they will require emergency removals of manure at times when manure should not be applied to land. For instance, when soils are frozen, snow-covered, or saturated. Applying manure during these conditions poses a high risk for discharge to water. To minimize these risks, manure storage monitoring and maintenance is key. Producers should maintain and repair storage tanks and ponds to keep them structurally sound to prevent leaks. They should also inspect and record manure levels on a regular basis. Monitoring manure levels over time generates a key piece of data that helps farmers think ahead and plan manure removals to best coincide with the times when crops need nutrients. Monitoring also helps locate potential problems early so farmers can proactively look at their options before entering a reactive emergency response mode. A third risk area would be farms with no storage or inadequate manure storage capacity. Producers whose farms lack adequate storage capacity might choose to apply manure when soils are frozen, snow-covered, or saturated. Storing manure in structures with an adequate amount of storage capacity allows farmers to avoid applying manure during high-risk conditions. 
Finally, another important risk area to consider is the land application of manure. Although manure can provide important soil health benefits, manure applications should be planned ahead carefully to reduce nutrient over-application. Manure is challenging because it contains more phosphorus than nitrogen relative to crop needs. Therefore, if manure is applied at levels to meet the crop's nitrogen needs, phosphorus will be over-applied. Farmers can use risk assessment tools like the phosphorus index in order to manage this risk when applying manure. While these tools can help farmers manage risks on a field-by-field -field basis, they do not address another challenge facing today's farms. What to do when they produce more manure nutrients than they can properly apply to their own fields? Some farmers still give away manure for free, but an increasing number of producers are looking for ways to market it. Marketing manure can help justify the costs of transporting it off the farm. New technologies are being developed to concentrate manure nutrients into a more transportable form or to convert it into a value-added product. These technologies may become especially important in areas where there are many farms close together producing more manure nutrients than nearby crop fields can use. Managing manure to protect water quality involves strategies not only for manure storage but also for the location, timing, and rate of nutrient application. The choices made on one field or one farm add up as we look across an entire watershed. The key is to continually update and improve these technologies, recommendations, and management practices so that farmers can make the most efficient possible use of manure nutrients while keeping water sources clean. These ongoing efforts will show that producing food and protecting water quality can go hand in hand. Mm -hmm.